Hey, good morning, class. Those of you at home, I hope y'all are awake this morning because the kids here in class are not too awake. We're having to take, take a quick little stretch break so they can wake up. But anyways, we are going to work on using a diagram or a model today to solve word problems, okay? So a lot of times in math, you will hear it called a whole part part chart. Okay. You will also hear it called a strip diagram. So those are the two things that we're going to be calling them and that we're going to be working with today. Okay. So our goal is to be able to use the strategy, draw a diagram to solve one and two step addition and subtraction problems. Okay. So let's start with the word problem at the very top of the page. Does anybody want to read that for me? Okay, Aaliyah. Mm Okay, so let's first use our IPAC. And they've kind of already broken it down for us. Um, so this would be the I part information. So let's look at what do I need to find. I need to find what? What did the question ask us? Well, let's go back up and read. It says, what was Sammy's total score? So that's what we need to find. Sammy's total score. And we're not doing very many problems today, but we're really taking our time on each problem. Okay, we're gonna break it down, really take our time using these strategies. Okay, so we're still on the eye of our IPAC. What do we need to find and what information am I given? Sammy scored how many points in the first round? Well, let's go back up and read again. Sammy scored 84 points in the first round of a new computer game. Okay, so let's circle that. That's important, right? Yeah. He scored 84 in the first round. He scored blank more points than that in the second round. So let's go back up and read again. It said he scored 21 more points in the second round than in the first round. So 21 more points in the second round. Okay, so we already know that our plan is to draw a strip, strip diagram, and then we're going to use the strip diagram to decide which operation we should do, addition or subtraction. Okay. So they've already kind of set up the strip diagram for us, but now we need to know what we're looking for and where the points go. You need to pay attention to the size of the boxes. So if I have two numbers, I have 84 and 21. Um, Am I looking for the total or do I already know the total amount of points? What, what are you going to say, Leah? We don't know the total, so that's what we need to find. Because remember up here we said I need to find Sam's total. So this line down here, see how it goes from the start of the boxes to the end? Y'all see that? That's, that means that's the total amount right here. So this box where it's empty, 
that's what we're looking for. That represents the total. So I want you to put, go ahead and put total down here because this big, oh, sorry. This big old long line that stretches all the way across both of the boxes represents the total amount, both of these boxes put together, okay? Now let's look at the size of these boxes to see what number should go there. Can you tell which box is a little bit bigger? Yes, yes. right? The one on the left? So which number needs to go on that one? 84. 84, good. So 84 goes on the left because that box is a little bit bigger. And 21, since it's a smaller number, goes in the smaller box. Okay? Now how do I find the total? That's what's missing, right? Yes. How do we find the total? We add, we add them together. Good. So we're going to add 84 points in the first round, 21 points more in the second round, okay, so let's add those together and tell me what you get. Okay, so here we're saying we got 105, which is correct. So 105 points total. Okay, well now we need to complete another strip diagram to show Sammy's total score because this 105 isn't actually his total score in all. That was his total score for the second round. How many points did he score in the first round? 84 or 21? 80, 81. 84. 84. So 84 was the first round. Second round was 105. Now look at the two boxes. Does one look a little bit bigger than the other? Yes. This one on the right just looks a tiny bit bigger. So I'm going to put it, what number would I put there? 105 because it's a little bit bigger. 84 and a little bit smaller one. Okay. So that represents round one and round two. Now how am I going to find the total again? What would I do to find the total points? Evangeline? What does total mean? What does it say on the board up there? To add. Total means to add or find the sum. So we add round one. We add round two. Y'all add those up and tell me what you Okay, so the kids here are saying they got 189, which is correct. Very good. Okay, so that means Sammy's total score was 189 points. So number one at the very bottom, how many points did Sammy score in the second round? What should go there? Not his total score, just the second round. Kelsey? No, not 21. That was kind of tricky because the 21 was just how many more points he scored in the second round. He scored 21 more points the second round than he did in the first round. So then 105. 105. Very good. Kaylee? So he scored 105 in the second round. What was Sammy's total score? 189. 189. There you go. So that was a two-step problem. First we had to figure out his second round score, and then we had to figure out the total score. Okay, so what do we call this? What have we been using? 
the sun. No, what is this model called that we're using? It's called a strip diagram. Or what's the other one we use? Whole part part. Okay. The reason we call it a whole part part is because you have a box that represents the whole and then two parts, sometimes three parts. Okay, let's flip the page. No? See how long it took us just to do one problem? See that it's got 10 minutes down over here on the right hand side. 10 minutes to do one problem. That's okay. We will get faster as we learn the strategies and get better at going through all the steps, right? Right now it's just important that we understand and take our time and do it correctly. Okay, okay next one says Anna scored 265 points in a computer game. Greg scored 142 points. How many more points did Anna score than Greg? You can use a strip diagram to solve the problem. Okay, so we're going through the IPAC. They've already kind of broken it down for us. The read is just our, what we do is information. Okay, what do I need to find and what information am I given? That's the first step. Okay, what do I need to find? Well, we go back up and read again. And it says, how many more points did Anna score than Greg? Is that what we need to find? Yes. So how many more points Anna scored than Greg. Second part, what information am I given? So we go back up and read again. Anna scored 265 points in a computer game. Is that important information? Yeah. Yes. So I'm just going to put A for Anna and 265 points. Okay, Greg scored 142 points. Is that important information? Yeah. Yes. So Greg, 142 points. This is how you did it last year? What do you mean with the letters? You would put initials for their names? We would just put like A, like they start with A, D, then put the number in the back. Good. And you are familiar with what we're doing, right? Yeah. It's just a, it's just an easy way for you to see real quickly without having to write out the whole name. And sometimes when we do it, we just pretend like the and Yeah, and you, the names aren't important. You can make up a name. If, it's, if, if there's ever a name that you can't read, then just call them A or call them G or make up something, okay? Don't get stuck on the name and let that throw you off in a word problem, okay? All right, let's go on to our plan. What is my plan or strategy? Well, this whole lesson is about using a model, right? So we're going to try to keep using the strip diagram to figure out whether we need to add or subtract. Okay, what's the other name that we've been calling the strip diagram that we, you will hear me say to Aaliyah? Whole part part. Good. Whole part part. Whole part part. That's because one of the boxes represents the whole amount, and then the other two smaller boxes represent two parts. Okay, so we have our information, we have our plan. Now we're going to start our answer part, which is solving. Record the steps you use to solve the problem, okay? 
So we're going to put in the numbers in the strip diagram. So Anna was 265 points. Greg was 142. And we have this missing piece here. The reason we have this missing piece is because we want to know how many more points did Anna score than Greg? Well, this is the part that he would need to make it equal Anna scores. You see how they line up perfectly? Okay? Yes. That's what they're trying to show you. Okay, well, if this is Greg's amount, how many more points does he need to get to Anna's whole amount? Okay? Now, if there's a missing piece, what does that mean I need to do? Subtract. So if I'm missing a piece, then you need to subtract. Subtract the two parts that you're given. We also say, instead of subtract, when you're in third grade, you need to know that means to find the what? What is it called? Find the sum. No, not the sum. Remember, it starts with the D for subtraction. Difference. difference. Find the difference. How many more was a big clue too, right? When it said how many more, I knew that I was probably going to subtract. Okay, now what two numbers do I need to subtract to find this missing number? Good. So let's go over here and show our work. 265 minus 142. And tell me what you get for your difference. Remember, it's called the difference. Okay, good. We got our answer. 123. So that would be our missing piece right here. How? So let's go down and answer these questions real quick. How many more points did Anna score than Greg? What needs to go here? We already worked it out. 123. So Anna scored 123 more points than Greg. How do you know your answer is reasonable? What have we learned to prove that our answer makes sense or that it is close? Check it. Check it. Uh, estimate, round, right? Good. Yeah. So let's go ahead and round these real quick. What is close to 265 that I could round to? That would make it easy to do in my head. 100 and 300. 100 and 300, good. So 300 minus 100 is what? 200, right? Is that pretty close to our answer. Okay, could I have done about 270 minus 140? Can we do that in our head? No. Yes. 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 What's 2 minus 1? And 70 minus 40? Um, 7 minus 4? Three, so it's 30, right? 130. Is that close to our answer? Yes. So we know our answer is reasonable by estimating. Okay, so my answer is reasonable since my estimating or estimation is very close, right? We could write that all out in a sentence, but I'm not going to make you write that all out. You just need to know that since our estimation is close, then that makes my answer reasonable. It makes sense. Okay, how did your drawing help you solve the problem? So right here, how did this drawing help us solve the problem? Did it help you to see that this little piece was missing and to get this missing piece, how you would do it? Yes. 
you saw that little piece in it, you know that it needed to equal this up here, so you needed to subtract the bigger number minus the smaller number, okay? So it helped us see we needed to subtract. Find the missing piece. Okay, so that's the whole point of this. We don't want these boxes and the pieces to make it more confusing. They're supposed to help it make a little bit easier for you to see do I add? Do I subtract? Well, if, these, if I have a missing piece, then that should be a clue that you need to subtract. Okay, let's go on to number one. I'm going to read it for you guys. It's already kind of set up for you over here. So I'm gonna let you guys try this one on your own, okay? It says, Sarah received 73 votes in the school election. Ben received 25 fewer votes than Sarah. How many students voted? Okay, so go through these steps. Find how many students voted for Ben. Write the numbers in the bars, okay? So what numbers need to go in the bars, and then what would be our final answer? How many students voted? It's two steps, so that's why they have a strip diagram here and a strip diagram here. Let's go ahead and just do, I want you guys to try the first strip diagram on your own. What needs to go here? And what are you going to um, answer for this box right here? Okay, so let's look at what we have started. The important information is Sarah received 30 or 73 votes. Ben received 25 fewer votes than Sarah. Does that mean Ben received 25 votes? No, he didn't receive 25 votes. He received 25 votes less than Sarah. So that's what we need to figure out. How many votes did Ben have? That's step one, okay? That's why we are have two of the boxes. Step one is to find out how many votes were for Ben, okay? Now 73 was for Sarah. Ben had 25 fewer. So how are we gonna figure out this missing piece of Ben's actual amount of votes. What do we do, Kelsey? We Good. So don't forget, if you're missing a piece, that should be a clue that we need to subtract. We subtract to find the missing piece. Okay? 73 minus 25. Okay, 48. So that means 48 votes is how much what? What does this number represent? 48 votes. For who? For Ben. Ben, okay. So write the numbers in the bars. We did that. So Ben received 48 votes. Okay, but that's just step one. We found how many votes for Ben. We already know how much Sarah received. Now, the second step is to find the total amount of, of votes, right? Because our question says, how many students voted? So we have votes for Sarah, votes for Ben, right? So 
what needs to go in these two boxes now? Notice the size of them. What goes over here in the bigger one? Kelsey? The 73. Very good. 73, because that's the bigger number. And what goes in the smaller box? 45. 48. Okay. So to find the total amount of votes, notice we're not missing a piece anymore. We're missing the whole because this bar down here at the bottom represents the total because it goes all the way across. Now how are we going to find the total amount? What do we do to find the total, Evangeline? Add. Good. It even tells you right here. 73 plus 48. So we're going to add to find the total amount of votes. Yes. 121 votes. Okay, so the last step says so blank students voted. How many students voted? 121. 121. Okay, does that make a little bit more sense now? Yes. Okay, if you have this big long bar, then that means you need to find the total, which is by adding, right? If you're missing a little piece, then you're going to do what? Subtract. Subtract, okay. Now let's look at number three. I'm going to skip number two. Let's go to number three. Use the strip diagram at the right. Write a problem to match it. Okay. What does this big long piece down here represent? We just talked about this. The, whole, the line that goes all the way across represents what? Total. Good. Okay. So let's start with that. We could say there are 157 third graders at New Waverly Elementary. Could we say that as yes. a total? Okay. Oh, so Kaylee, you see that since the box is missing, we need to make it a subtraction problem? Good. So missing piece means to subtract. So whatever we say in our word problem, we need to make it sound like a subtraction problem. So there are 157 third graders. We'll just say third graders so you don't have to write out all of that other stuff. We'll just say 157 third graders. Now, what do we want to talk about next? 89 of them went on a field trip, or 89 of them went on a vacation? Went on a vacation? Or went outside to play? Went outside to play? Um, went to go read? Went to go read? In the okay. Library. Okay, we'll do that. 89 of them. went to library. So what should our final question be to make it sound like a subtraction problem? How many students did not go to the library. Would that be a subtraction problem? Yes. Yes. How many students did not go to the library? Okay, so we included our total. We included the part. And then we're trying to find the missing part by subtraction. Okay, so 
so very good. So just keep in mind, when you're missing a part or a little piece, you're going to subtract. When you're missing the long line down at the bottom, that means you're missing the total and you need to add, okay? We would subtract on this one, but I'm not going to make you work this one out. We do. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do 5, 6, 7, and 8 on our own, and then we will check it together. I went ahead and started the strip diagram for you on number 5, and here in class they've told me, oh, we, we need to find the total, so that means we need to add. So we went ahead and started number 5 together. And then I want you to continue using the strip diagram or whole part part for six, seven, and eight. Okay, let's finish checking this and then you guys are actually gonna be done with math today. We're not gonna do any other work because this took our whole math time today. And so we will just continue practicing this tomorrow. But for now, just follow along and check your answers. Number five. Caden drives 164 miles on the first two days of a business trip. He travels 77 miles on the third day. How many miles does he travel over three days? So here's the first two days. Here's the third day. We want to know how many miles he traveled over all three days. So you were looking for the total. If we're looking for a total, that means we add them up. 4 plus 7 is 11, 1 plus 6 is 7, 7 plus 7 is 14, carry the 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. 241 miles across all three days, so D would have been your correct answer. Okay, number 6. Lauren reads 259 pages of a book in a week. David reads 183 pages in a week. How many more pages does Lauren read than David? Well, it sounds like they're comparing the two people, right? When it sounds like they're comparing how many more or how many less, your strip diagram needs to be like this. The bigger one goes on top, which was Lauren. Okay. And then they're comparing it to David. His pages were 183, so it should be a little bit less, a smaller piece. But then we want to know how, what does this piece here equal because it asks how many more did Lauren read than David. Okay, well, what do I do if I'm missing a piece? Kelsey? Subtract, good. If I'm missing a piece, I will subtract. Okay. How many more was also a clue that you would subtract. So you did 259 minus 183. 9 minus 3 is 6. 5 minus 8, can I do that? No. No, so we go next door. 15 minus 8 is 7, 1 minus 1 is 0. So 76B would have been your correct answer. Okay, so this one might have been a little bit more difficult to know how to set up, but just remember when they're comparing two people, like how many more did David read or how many more points did Anna score, then you're going to set one of the bigger boxes up on top and the smaller box on bottom. Okay, number seven is a multi-step problem, so that means you had more than one thing you had to do. There are 306 people at the fair on Saturday, 124 fewer people on Sunday. How many people are at the fair on both Saturday and um, Sunday? I'm sorry. Okay, so it asks us to find how many people are at the fair on both Saturday and Sunday. Both. Is that a keyword? Yes. What does that mean you're going to do if you hear that? Uh, add. Add. Okay. Add. 
Okay, so let's set it up like we're going to find the total amount. Do I need to put one big bar on top and one little bar on bottom? Yes. Or side by side? Side by side. Side by side. So I need to have the bigger bar is going to be 306, smaller bar 124. And they asked us to find how many people are at the fair on both of these days. So I want to combine these, right? So that means I'm missing the total. How do I find the total? Well, we already said it, right? We said we need to add 306 plus 124. 6 plus 4 is? Zero. 10. 10. Carry the 1. 1 plus 2? 6. 1 plus 2? 3. 3 plus 1? 4. 4. 430. Okay, well, hold on. We got a second step. There are 124 fewer people on Sunday. Oh, so what does that mean we should have done here? 124 fewer people on Sunday, that means we should have done what? Subtracted. Subtracted. So oh, uh, 100 or 306 minus 124. Oh, 182, okay, but that's just step one. So there are 306 people at the fair on Saturday, 182 people on Sunday. So now what needs to go in this small box? Not 124, but 182. That's the second step. Okay. So the second step is to add these two. So the 124 wasn't the actual amount of people there were on Sunday. There were 124 fewer people on Sunday. That's why it's important we always go back and read a second or third time. That way we make sure we're reading it carefully and not making any mistakes. Can I read the book? Aaliyah caught my mistake, didn't you, Aaliyah? Good job. Okay, well, no, we're not done yet. Now we're going to do the second step. We add the people at the fair on Saturday, which was 306, plus the people at the fair on Sunday, which is 182. 488 total. So it's not D, it is C. I think I just might give Aaliyah a piece of candy for catching that mistake. She is paying attention. Candy. Candy, you said candy? Mm-hmm. Okay, number eight, last one. The number of laptop computers sold in one day was 42. That is 18 fewer than the number of desktop computers sold. How many desktop computers were sold? Okay. Well, we have 42 and 18 fewer Okay, so is this a multi-step problem again? Did y'all have to do two steps on this one? No. Well, first okay. we need to find what is um, 18 fewer than 42, right? 18 fewer than 42. So what would I do to find that number that goes here? If I'm missing a piece, what do I do? Subtract. Subtract. 
42 was how much they sold in laptops, and then desktops was 18 fewer. So we subtract 12 minus 8 is 4, 3 minus 1 is 2. So 24. Okay, but that's not our final answer. That is just how many desktop computers were sold. The number of laptops computer computers was 42. That is 18 fewer than the number of desktop. Oh, okay. So that this is 18. This is 18 fewer. So now, what would my second step be? We would add 42 plus 18. It's 16. Yes. Okay. So we found out this number, we, we really didn't even need to, 24. We found the missing piece, but we actually needed to find how many was 18 fewer by adding. Is, it, is the answer 60? The answer is 60, yes, C. That was a hard one. Did anybody get that one? No, me, I got it right. I got it. I got it. I got it. Nope, nope. I got it. You got it, and you showed your work? You did 42 plus 18? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so today for your work in class, um, we are not going to do any assignment. This was um, just our work that we're going to do for today. So as long as you've completed these workbook pages with us together on this video, those of you at home, then you are done with your math for today. Yay.